Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the, the section 7 residual plots and correlation matrix. So in this video I'm going to show you how to get them, um, modify them a little bit. If you're a Mac user, you have some additional problems that I'll talk about at the end um, that you have to fix. If they're a quick fix, it just takes a little bit of time, so you'll see the video. Um, I don't actually go through all the violations in this video in detail because that would take a long time, but um, down here uh, I have this discussion of the like how you actually test for them. And so if your goal is you're comfortable getting them, but how, like I need a, a reminder on the main violations and how to actually test for them, um, you can stop this video and go watch it. You don't have the data that is um, you won't have access to the data that video goes along with, but you can kind of follow along and hopefully you'll be able to apply it to a different scenario. But for now, um, let's jump into this one. So again, um, we should be in the university data, and I made this one a little bit easier so we didn't have to go searching for data the whole time. And so the objective is to obtain and discuss the residual plots from both the regressions on the previous sheet slash video. Um, and so it is talking about, so let me um, delete this. Uh, it's talking about these two. So the first one is user regression to see how total applications influence total enrollment. And so what we need to first do is um, we have enrollment, we have applications, so we can run this regression. So we can do data analysis and regression and do OK. Um, and then, so I'm predicting enrollment. It's my Y range. I'll click there, Controller Command Shift down. So we'll hit Enter. And then my X range is just the application. So control here, Controller Command Shift down. Hit Enter. And then make sure you have labels checked. And then again, um, I like to keep my regression output um, on the same sheet, uh, but I'm not going to for these two for a couple different reasons, um, which we'll come back to. But uh, so I'm just going to keep it. So it's going to put it on a new worksheet. And then what you need to do is make sure you have residual plots that box checked, and it's going to give us the picture that we want. And so now, if we hit OK, um, hopefully it pop. Yours probably says like sheet one or something like that. Um, we have our output, and then we have our um, uh, yeah, we have our output and our plot. So this one actually works really well, and if you have a Mac or a PC, um, you should see sort of the same thing. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can make the picture bigger. Uh, I see a kind of a, already see a funnel shape, which indicates to me maybe some heteroscedasticity, but you can play around with these axes to kind of clearly look at the data. Like maybe I want to cut it off and just look at um, total applications uh, that are I don't know, schools with uh, under 100,000. So if you double click on this axis, um, it should pop up with the different ranges. And so we could change this to be um, not 100,000, 10,000, two, three, we'll hit enter, and it'll adjust. And then um, as long as you're clicked on here, again, a number, if you go over here and just click on here, um, it'll update. And so again, maybe I want to do, um, again, this is the range for the residuals. So I might do, I don't know, negative 500 and um, it looks like, I don't know, 2,500. Right, a lot of this is just playing around to kind of get a better sense. And again, I, I still kind of see that funnel shape. But you can mess around with these residual plots um, pretty easily. If for some reason you get, like, clicked off of here, again, you have to remember, like, click on a number on an axis. Um, and sometimes it pops back up. Sometimes it doesn't. So if I double click, uh, I might have to go, let's see. I'm going to close. I'm going to do this. I'm going to close it. Um, I hate graphs in Excel, I'll be completely honest, it's not very user friendly. Yeah, so if you close it and then double click, um, you get back. So one is easy, it works for, for both PCs and Macs effectively. It's um, when we're doing multiple regression, that makes life a little harder. So back on this residual plot, so what's the second one? Um, and so if I go back to here, it says, user regression to see how the percent of freshmen receiving federal grant aid, percent of undergraduate enrollment of women, and undergraduate enrollment um, in general undergraduate enrollment influenced the uh, graduation rate for bachelor's degree with six years. So uh, again, I already did this data for us. And so I have my X variables here. I think these three things impact the graduation rate. So let's go and let's do data. And we'll do data analysis and we'll select regression. And then I do Y range first. So I click on the little button and I click here. And again, I make sure I have the header, control, or command, shift down. I'll hit enter. And then I'll click this, and I'll highlight across my three X variables. And again, I don't think, some Macs actually work. You can do the whole columns, but here you can't. Um, I know for PCs. Uh, make sure I have labels checked. Um, if you're a Mac, 
this is where you really might want to select output range and keep it on here because if you do that, your residual plots actually aren't messed up. Um, for a PC, it doesn't matter, but for a Mac, they still haven't fixed this. Um, you might want to select output range and put it on the sheet, but I'm going to do a new worksheet. That way I can show you how to fix them as well. So I'll make sure I have residual plots um, going on here. So I'll hit OK. And we should get a new sheet here. And then um, this is what most PC users should see. Right? And if you're a Mac, this first variable and its residual plot are good. So you should see this exactly how it looks and you know I, I don't like that this is so like small and condensed I can't really see anything so I might um, maybe make this a little bit larger and see what happens um, kind of size it off that way I really like that so that one's correct unfortunately I'm gonna bet that you do not oh, come on now I'm just randomly clicking on things I'm gonna bet so I'm gonna delete this one just so we don't have to worry about it right, I'm gonna bet that these two what's going on here you see something very different. And so what you likely see is, um, let me make sure I'm, I'm going to make this wrong really quickly. So what you see um, is, uh, you probably see something like this. Um, and actually it's probably column C if I had to guess in terms of what it's showing you. And so I bet you see something like this, um, which isn't correct because what it's doing is it's just plotting your residuals versus your residuals again. Um, and in this one, I'm going to bet kind of the same thing. You might not see anything, to be honest. Uh, yeah, here. So you might, oops. Uh, so I bet you don't see anything like here. And it's because, again, it's trying to run data versus nothing. You can kind of see where it's highlighted over here. So to fix yours, what you have to do is click on a point somewhere in here, and then you have to update this. You have to tell it, like, where your data was from, like what sheet. And so we ran that from the residual plots sheet. And so I just went ahead and copied that when I did it, but you have to type it in exactly how it looks. And for some reason, it's a single quote instead of a double quote. Now, I have no idea why that's the case, but then if you hit enter, Sorry, I had to make sure I was doing this right. So yeah, what we need to do is figure out where that percent of total enrollment is. And so um, first I'll do is I'll go look at the residual plots here. And um, right, so it looks like percent of total enrollment that are women, that's the variable we're looking at. It's in column M. And so I'll go back to where that is. And you have to go in here and you first have to tell it what sheet it's on. So it's on residual plot sheet instead of sheet eight. So I'm just going to delete sheet 8, and then I'm going to do, I don't know why, single quote, and then we do it residual um, plots, exactly how it looks. And then remember that we changed that. It's in column M instead of C. I changed that um, earlier, which I probably shouldn't have done. Oh, we hit enter. And now this is more like what you should see. And again, it might change based on how zoomed in or zoom out you are. Um, so for this one, it's a little bit harder because... Um, you don't actually have a point to click on. So my main thing is to tell you um, it's easier for Mac people if you run that regression and put the output right next to where your data is. Uh, but if you did make it and you want to fix it, so what you got to do is click in like the area here and then right click or two finger click or command click. There's a bunch of different ways. And then get select data. And then you should only have one series. You're going to have to hit edit. And then what we need to change is the X range, our X values. And again, um, I honestly would just delete this and then hit the little arrow button and we can go back and find that variable um, on our sheet here. So I need to go here. We gotta find where we ran it. It gets a little hidden. So it looks like um, it should be here. So, and so I'll do there and then control or command shift down. I hit enter, and then we could do OK, and now it's fixed. So again, 
I'm sorry the Mac people like yours are just messed up I don't know why they do that um, so the easiest fix is honestly when you run this regression what I would do is um, so you know, to avoid having to do that is whenever you're running a regression just do um, data data analysis regression and rather than new worksheet if you do an output range and again we already selected this data um, just select maybe here like if it's on the same sheet it works Right, so then your plot should all look exactly how a PC wants because they're all uh, matched up well. And again, I don't know why. I'm sorry it doesn't work very well. The other way for Mac. Uh, if you want a discussion, so that's how to get them. How what like how to test or look for issues um, are in the lecture slides as well as if you want a, a review, you can go back under the document and click on this link and it'll take you to like a, a 25 minute video where I actually talk about it. Um, the last piece, sorry, uh, I completely forgot about this, the correlation matrix. Um, this is to test for uh, endogeneity of variables and or multicollinearity. Uh, what you need to do is, so again, well, let's just go back to our data. All right, let's just do uh, the one that we had on sheet eight, and or you can, if you're on a Mac person, same thing. So this bottom part has the residuals for us. We need to go get the X variables as well. Um, to compare those, so back to where the data is, and then I'm going to delete these. All right, sorry, I forgot about this. And again, you can do this for the first one if you want, but what we need are um, the three X variables, which are these three, and then we'll copy it. We'll go back to sheet eight. Um, if you're on a Mac and you put it on that other sheet, so like for this one, what you could do is um, rather scroll all the way up. Um, you're going to paste them right here, but if you're a PC person, just paste them right next to residuals. And then, um, kind of like the correlation video, all I have to do is data analysis, and we're going to find where are we at correlation. We're going to do OK. And then we need to select all the way from residuals over to our all of our X's. Control or Command Shift down, hit Enter. Um, again, make sure you have labels selected, and I like to, again, kind of put them next to wherever I'm working. The sheet's getting hideous right now. I apologize. But you can put it kind of wherever you want. You do OK. And then I like to highlight and make sure that these fit. And then it gives you all the correlation. So um, if you remember from class, here's where we're going to look for omitted variables um, slash endogeneity. Uh, and here's where we're going to look for multicollinearity. But if you want me to like, go through those in detail, uh, please go and watch this video here as it walks you through the, the four different ones that we kind of uh, Sorry for the, the sort of scattered nature here, but I hope this was helpful.